we're at Sister Space and I have two wonderful visitors to this place, family. And we have our way of doing things. This is not a conventional, this is not a TV crew set up as you can see. Mm -hmm. But we're talking the team. And we're talking our language about our issues in our community. Mm -hmm. All right? Um, Sister, you were going to ask me something. Yes, because um, doing this work, you're actually taking a lot of, um, you know, people's pain I and mean, you're listening to their distress. Mm -hmm. And because some of it is so evocative and it could evoke some of the, what I call the primordial kind of responses, mm -hmm. I've just wondered who do you speak to? Who do you let off with? How do you recenter? So that Me personally. You personally, as the one who's delivering this amazing program. Thank you. That, that question is asked to me often. I have a colleague, Sister Rose, who runs Marta Books, and she's just excellent. And she's one sedative. And then I have a, a, a brethren who's also an Igra called Brother Aaron Hiley. And he's got a degree in counseling. So I talk to him occasionally. But there's nothing like having sisters. Mm. There's nothing like I don't actually have, actually have a, a person. Well, you've got me. You've got me. Oh! You've got me now. Thank you. I'm happy to meet Thank you. you. Once a month, yeah. as often as you need. I'm you know, you know I'm going to talk. talk. I, I know you're going to talk the thing. So listen, you're going to talk the thing, and I'm ready to hear. Thank you. I will be there for you. Thank you, because I have to say that um, I, I, I love being in service to the community. Mm. But when you hear these things it day in, been. day out, yes. all of the time, you, you don't realise how it creeps up on mm -hmm. you. Yeah. And though I, I, I have... Um, I'm very privileged in who I have in my life. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, the next speaker is a wonderful empress known as Sister Dr. Sandra Richards, and we have her in this space today. Wow. So if I can just welcome Sister. Greetings. Greetings. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you very much for coming in. Take my seat, please take my seat. This is the best place to sit. Mm. Am I, am I <laughs> yeah. You just oh, love making things. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so so what's been happening? That's what I well, I'm I'm here to join in the conversation, mm. but I need to know what's been happening. Well we we are sharing um in Sister Space um an aspect of our experiences as women and girls that very often it's bound in what you call the ethic of um, speech is silver but silence is golden mm -hmm. and um, that's one of the ethic in our family that you don't share things on the outside mm -hmm. and many of us have carried generations of this um, physical abuse, emotional abuse and sexual abuse and having this space that is an opportunity to share so that many women out there who are looking in could feel that their story is being told and yeah. it's the beginning yeah. of an opening for them. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's it's good to be here with sisters. I mean, you know, that's what I live my life. Yeah. Sisters and oh, sisterhood. Yeah. Uh -huh. Not that we don't like brothers, just to be clear. Yeah. Uh -huh. We happen to give birth to them uh -huh. occasionally and most of us have brothers as our father. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Not exclusively, but um, I think the importance of this is is not properly communicated. I think that, uh, let me declare, I'm an African-centered activist, scholar, um, parent, sister, I'm part of an African family. So my lens is an African-centered lens, and I, and I uh, make that statement without apology. Um, certainly, though, the conversation about what is happening to us is one that is long overdue. And as someone who trods globally, I recognize that the experience of us as black women, African women, is not that different. You know, this kind of scenario is happening to us um, here in the UK, uh, in the wider European space, in the Caribbean, in the Americas, on the African continent, um, there's something that's happening which seems to be giving permission for ones to 
abuse us, if they're not physically attacking us, yeah. they're using psychological means, um, economical means, um, even spiritual, spiritual means, means yeah. Yeah. to downpress us, oppress us, and have us forget that we are to be valued, to be considered beautiful, and to be held in high esteem. So this is where I kind of sit in a space where, you know, we have to face the things that are going wrong mm -hmm. so that we can heal from them. Mm -hmm. And that sometimes is a really painful experience. When we, when we look, many of us will say, well, you know, I've never experienced abuse. But if we actually think about it, we have. Mm -hmm. uh, if not directly, indirectly. Mm -hmm. We've um, grown up in environments where Maybe our mothers uh -huh. were abused or exploited, our grandmothers or an aunt or someone um, who looks like us was exploited. And so it is normal for humans to look to other humans as role models. So as black women, we're growing up and we're seeing that the black woman is treated badly and she doesn't say anything or she encourages everyone to be quiet about it. Mm it actually perpetuates something. Yeah. We learn that that's what you do. Mm -hmm. If someone is ill-treating you, exploiting you, um, you almost take on the responsibility of it. You know, you, you feel that it's your fault in some way because yeah. if you're a good girl mm -hmm. and you treat men well, then you will be treated well. Mm -hmm. So you have to cook, you have to clean, you have to know how to carry yourself, you mustn't argue or answer back. Mm. You must do as you're told mm. and everything will be wonderful. Mm. So that is often the, the frame of reference that we're given. It is not a frame of reference that is in our best interest. We need rites of passage programs that help us to know what to expect in terms of being treated well. Very true. If we don't have those, then a little thing will happen and we'll overlook it or mm. we'll excuse mm. it. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, another thing will happen and the practice of being abused then becomes entrenched and intrinsic in how we have our relationships and how we even how we speak one to another. Mm. So if I see you and you look beautiful, mm. somehow I don't feel able to tell you because it takes it away from me if I tell you you're beautiful, instead of having the frame of reference that says, if I tell you you're beautiful, mm -hmm. actually, there's more oh, beauty. That's right. There's actually more beauty mm -hmm. because you're beautiful. You tell me I'm beautiful. Mm -hmm. I tell you you're beautiful. Not to go around. All of us are beautiful, <laughs> and therefore yeah. we're stronger. That's yeah. right. If we're not experiencing a rites of passage program or a sisterhood or a way of being that promotes that, what happens is that other frame of reference becomes dominant. Mm -hmm. And where do we get that other frame of reference from? That's mm. the question. Mm. And that's where I have been doing a lot of work. I'm trying to understand what it is that makes us accept this. Even if it happens and we know it's not right, we feel bad about it, mm. what is it that is our frame of reference that makes us think, let us not, let's not make too much of a complaint. I mean, the reason why he's mad at me is because I didn't do something or you know he loves me he just can't help it or let me keep him safe even though I'm in danger mm. um, let me just try and stay for the children what is it what is that frame of reference where do we get that from I would want to suggest that that frame of reference is a Eurocentric frame of reference Very much so. it's, a, it's a frame of reference that we're introduced to from a very early early age. We're introduced to it in schools, we're introduced to it in the media, we're introduced to it in uh, what they might call um, mainstream culture, whatever that is. Mm. And that mainstream culture is not our mainstream. No. Uh, so I'm a researcher and I've been asking the question because a lot of people have written on this but the people who have written on it are not us. No. They're not us. Even when you have an academic 
researcher, writing on it, often they're using a Eurocentric frame of reference. Yeah. Or we have been fortunate enough to have um, American Africans or African Americans, which is the common term, visit our shores and talk to us so we learn through their lens mm. or they write through their experience. So they talk or they write about the civil rights movement, they write about other things, things that have not happened to Caribbean Africans mm. who came through a different journey and are experienced something here in the UK, in the belly of the beast. Mm. And I say the belly of the beast is because many of these um, inhumane, wicked practices originated here in Europe. Mm. Uh, the school system, the Eurocentric school system, is based on principles that see us Africans, melanin rich people, as being less than human. Mm -hmm. And so when you have a population of people that you see as less than human, you teach them differently. Yeah, Your expectations yeah. of them are different. Mm -hmm. The way you apply social policy to them is different. So the health service is very aggressive towards us. The school system is very aggressive towards us. Employment disadvantages mm -hmm. us. We're really entrenched in an environment where we're not seen as valuable or even human, but people don't want to talk about it. Mm. They don't want to talk about it. No. That's a difficult conversation mm. that you're here in order to open up. Very but difficult. It's therapeutically necessary. It's, it's therapeutically necessary for our healing, mm -hmm. but it may also cause us some hurt mm. when we are when we come to realize the extent to which this is systematic mm. and it is not an accident and when you raise it in the presence of others they then deteriorate emotionally or become um, uncomfortable mm. my position is that if someone's going to be uncomfortable it's about time for someone else and not us. Mm. <laughs> so that's why I promote this kind of self-love that we do. Mm. This, yeah. this um, uh, recognizing each other as mm. being divine, yeah. Yeah. And goddesses, goddesses. Yes, yes. empresses, mm. queens. That's how we're to speak about each other. Mm. Um, raising the idea, not just raising it to have a conversation, but raising it to elevate the idea of us being royal mm. of us having sovereignty over ourselves so that when we encounter abuse in the school system in a shop mm. in a doctor surgery in a relationship mm. from the time we see the very beginning of it mm. we can we can recognize it we can recognize it that's and right. we can just cut it out yeah, that's right. at the very very yeah. beginning of it mm. Instead of the self-doubt that many yeah. of us have. We have the self-doubt yeah. because we've been schooled in a system yeah. that makes us Feel think that we're nothing. That we're nothing. And then to hold on to a relationship, you really gotta put up with that, you know? It comes with a relationship. Yeah. You know, he's gonna be harsh with you and he's gonna cheat on you and he's going to withhold things from you and that comes with a relationship. That is not no. the right frame of reference. Mm. The right frame of reference is one that holds our brothers in high esteem, our sisters in high esteem, mm -hmm. our elders in high esteem, yes, right. our children in mm -hmm. high esteem. There is enough high esteem to go around. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> and where we have deviance, where we encounter someone who has been schooled in a Eurocentric frame of reference or way of being, so that they think it's okay to abuse us, we either let them know that it's not okay mm -hmm. to do it to anyone no, exactly. or let them know harm will come to them. Mm -hmm. I'm a pacifist, I am, but actually, <laughs> spiritually speaking, mm. I don't believe that we have to always be soft. If someone needs a hard lash, you give them a hard lash one time. In fact, my mother used to say that. Mm -hmm. Somebody troubles you, take off your shoe and give them one <laughs> <laughs> It's one yeah. hard, clean lash. Yeah. Mm. The art of war is that you see where the target is, mm. 
and you lick it down clean. <laughs> but Sister Doctor, is it true that a hard lash can come in many forms? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. I'm not promoting physical violence. Mm. However, mm. I'm not ruling out. I'm very serious here. Yes. We actually have an ability, you know, we have to accept this. We have an ability mm. as, as black women, as African mm. women, we can let people know shit without oh, yeah. even opening oh, our And we have a right to defend Very ourselves. Mm. We can let people know with a look, mm -hmm. with a sign. Yes, ma'am. How we walk, mm -hmm. how we hold our head, yes, yep. how we vibrate. Yeah. Uh -huh. People know, uh -huh. do not mess with, this is the wrong day. You are making a very big mistake. Let me warn you, mm -hmm. do not go any further. In fact, our children know this. Mm. Our children know this. But if we are schooled in a system that does not help us to know that English is not first language, mm -hmm. we think that we will plead and we will beg and we will ask the oppressor to stop oppressing us, mm -hmm. or the perpetrator to stop abusing us, Come on. or the employer to stop exploiting us. It's not going to just happen like that. No. We ourselves have to have these difficult conversations. That's right. We have to cry. Yeah. We have to taste our own snot. Mm -hmm. yeah. Come on. Actually, we have to taste our own snot. Mm. Sometimes, not that you want to make a three course meal, yeah. that's what we're going to do. <laughs> but you have to mm. go through the yeah. pain mm -hmm. and come out the other side. Mm. You have to be compassionate with yourself. That's yes, true. Yeah. Many of us have been in situations that we really wouldn't want to be in again. I know I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know. Mm someone will step to you and tell you two nice words and for a minute you're a bit dizzy come for on a minute. Mm. and then you notice the nonsense that you notice the nonsense that yes <laughs> <laughs> you, about it. you know or you might encounter a sister when you're trying to share this way of being with her and she is suspicious of you you know you tell her she looks good and she's suspicious of you like what do you want you know what nothing you just, just acknowledging that you just acknowledge mm. and we want to live this kind of, mm. this is our liberty this is our chosen liberty and if you are ready and willing to participate in this liberty then the love will prevail mm -hmm. if you're not willing to then the love will not prevail in the way we want to but you certainly can't say to someone like us you know you need to stay with him because he doesn't you know he doesn't hit you very hard or he doesn't mean it. Or he used to be worse than that. He's mm. not a lot better than he was. Mm. You don't need to hear any of that. Anybody who's encouraging you to stay in an abusive, exploitive situation, yes, ma'am. You need to limit and preferably remove mm -hmm. your relationship exactly. or exposure to them. Yeah. Anybody that's doing you wrong, if you feel bad, if you can't. If you can't sleep at night and relax, if when they're coming home you feel bad, come on. Any of these kinds of things, stop. See that intuition? Yeah. Yes, you see that intuition oh, yeah. that we ignore? Yeah. This is not written in any manual. Manual, and certainly it's not written in a Eurocentric manual nope. designed to uplift melanin rich people like come us. Come on. It's not written. No. It is not written. So we have a responsibility. To lift ourselves up, we need these rights of passive programs, we need the sisterhood, okay. Definitely. we need to be honest with each other, yes, because the shame is not ours. Mm. No. The shame is not ours. Mm. Hmm. I think I should stop here because wow. thank you. Yes, I mean, I don't know what, what if you have any thoughts on what I'm just saying. If you knew about the self love, well, we've known about it for a little while actually, this self love, mm -hmm. this loving each other, but to me, it's very vital. From a very young age to know about it because mm. I didn't know about it, mm. and that's and I come to understand that as I as through my journey that if you're not empowered within yourself or mm. know that you are that you're valuable, mm -hmm. that you are precious, mm -hmm. then you get into a situation that you have no understanding, and the next thing you're kind of like, how did I? Come this person mm. where I'm frightened. Mm. Any minute he's going to come and he's going to knock me down or mm. punch me or whatever. And you're in fear of your life mm. all the time. Mm. And it erodes your. It, yeah. it, you ain't got no confidence already, but it erodes it even more. So you're literally almost to the ground. So it's when you, but if you learn it from young coming up, that would help because to me, 
uh, as, as a mother that uh, as a mother I made it I my where my son was concerned I made it very clear to him how he's supposed to treat a woman mm. and praise be he never saw what took place between me and his father but it's something I that's why I made that purpose to leave because mm -hmm. I did not want him growing up in that mm. and I didn't want to be in that anymore mm. but it's that thing as a as a young girl coming up we need to talk to our daughters we Come need on. to make them understand good. that you are precious if the person is abusing you come to me talk to me but some of us are so afraid to come and talk to our parents because you have been telling you he was no good and da -da -da. Yeah. come that's on not, you, that's not the way to do with come it on. As a mother, we need to be find a way to be compassionate yes you did warn her that's not the point the point is let her be, let her be able to come to you and also when she comes mm -hmm. believe her yes, yes. yes ma'am yes. believe her exactly because for some of us we have not healed that thing that happened to us and so we're either so keen to hold on to the relationship and don't want to see the possibility that what the child is saying is true mm. or it happened to us we've not been able to resolve it ourselves mm. and so we can't confront it mm. and we're pretty much saying it will pass mm. just don't rock the boat mm. and you perpetuate something so even if they don't see a violence or they don't you know they, they mm. Can I just say, most people don't even believe it that, that happens. And I give you an example. When I decided to leave, I used to go to this dry cleaners, and they knew uh, my son's father. And when I was when I told them that I'm no longer going to be living in the area, they go, "Why?" And I said, um, "Because I no longer want to live around it." Um, and then I, oh, you both know I'm going on my own. And they were like. He's a very nice man. Oh, yeah. mm -hmm. You're very nice. And I have to say, they, do, you know, he, he's very nice. A friendship outside, oh. yeah, outside. Can't force him on that. Perpetrator. But inside is a hub. So in the end, I just turned around and said, "It's amazing. What goes on behind closed doors? Mm -hmm. It's another See, story yeah, altogether." Live with me. It's Two different yeah. things. But I think it's a very good point that you made about starting with the young daughters is very important but if they miss that cycle because like some of the adults haven't themselves been healed yeah it's important to value spaces like this yes, and other definitely. opportunities the sisterhood, because the healing journey is a lifelong one and mm. if you haven't had it as a growing up as a young person there is still opportunity and hope mm. for you to be able to begin that healing journey mm. and it starts with breaking the silence yeah. because silence and shame is what um, those yeah. two things imprison yes. a lot of people yes. Very true. and if you can break through that and that's why this program when silence is not golden mm. is so powerful and I think that should be a mantra mm. for us mm. because we often talk girls don't speak yes. don't say this oh. silence <laughs> but silence is not always golden oh, very true I agree I absolutely very agree true. I think one of the things I've also been um, I've learned, I learned, I learned through the work, the empowerment work, my yeah. own um, self development journey, yeah. um, the research I do. Uh, I've learned that you have to listen differently. Mm. I've learned that, and because education and schooling is where I see that a lot of this. Um, is rooted mm. we're conditioned in a particular way systematically mm. and the place that we're systematically conditioned is school yes mm. so that you can be in a school and you see certain children get privileged attention mm. and others mm -hmm. are encouraged to be quiet or sit down mm. or you know um, something will be said, something mm. disrespectful or condescending will be said to you about your style, mm. your hair, mm. you the way you speak, yeah. where you live, oh, yeah. your family. Mm. Something condescending is said about you yeah. that begins to have you pathologize your own self. And then maybe you'll become pathologized by them officially. Formally. You know, it's interesting you should say that because um, over the weekend um, I was sharing in a particular festival environment. This um, woman came here when she was 12 years old, you know, from the Caribbean to join the family. And she didn't have the opportunity to share with me that 
The reason why she didn't do well academically in school is because whenever, um, when they just arrived and they were in the school, she was quite bright coming from Jamaica, but whenever she put her hand up, she said the teacher, the mm. white English teacher, would actually be looking around mm. and pointing and, and really avoiding mm. looking. And she said that ruined her confidence so mm. much that she stopped even putting her hands up. Not her, mm. uh, uh, a number of other children came mm. from the Caribbean. She stopped even indicating and that actually began to affect her academic yeah. and her, uh, her achievement academically. She said to this day, suffered in terms of the job she had as a result of mm. how she was treated mm. as a child yeah. in that environment by yeah. teachers that she looked to mm. in order to help her adjust to this new environment. That's really oh, no. I mean that I, I said I had to share that with yeah. you before. Because yeah. don't forget also that a lot of our children they spend a lot of time with the teachers. Yes. They become very attached to that teacher. And if you have love for a teacher and that teacher doesn't have love for you, yeah. mm. what is the damage? Mm. Definitely. So on an individual level, mm. the teacher doesn't have love for you. And in your child mind, mm. you can't make sense of it. Mm. But you can experience it. Mm. You just That's know yeah. that for some yeah. reason, mm. yes. you're not getting treated fairly. Mm -hmm. um, what also happened, and this I don't think this happened in the States, what happened to young people who came from the Caribbean is that they were put into uh, educationally yes. subnormal Normal. sets. Mm -hmm. right. So you really, this is an intentional form of abuse mm. and discrimination. Come on. That you take a population of people mm. who are bright, who are trusting, mm -hmm. you have a duty of care, mm -hmm. and you send them off, you siphon them off to other, you, in fact, you bust them out mm -hmm. to other Literally, schools. Yeah. Or when they are in a school, you then tell them that they will not achieve great things. Yeah. Or you encourage them not to sit exams. Mm. You use your power and influence to tell parents that they will not put forward the child for a particular exam because the child will be better off doing something else. Oh, yeah. So a lot of opportunities are taken away from children Literally. intentionally. Yes. So can I come in at this point, just mm -hmm. for the last few minutes, if I can just squeeze in sure. mm -hmm. somewhere. Yeah, mm -hmm. you can speak to her. This, this has been one of the most interesting conversations that I've had in a long while. And so much that I'm reflecting on. Mm. So many of the points you raised. One in particular is when we talk about the journey, our school journey here, and how mm. it's impacted us, yeah. not only as children, but as adults. Mm. We look at the system now, and I draw us back to the domestic abuse situation, especially for black women. Mm -hmm. Now, nobody can argue that our hair is different than any other culture. Mm -hmm. yeah? You go outside, you don't blow in the wind necessarily, mm -hmm. unless you straighten it or you have something mm -hmm. on it. Many times I've asked, how many people have washed, you know, they can wash their hair and dry it in 10 minutes and go to work. Mm -hmm. If I was to wash my hair, you know, we're seeing work for the rest of the week. <laughs> yes? Our hair is different. We need different oils for our skin and everything. We'll go to, and it takes a lot of us to, for us to even go to these organizations, outside organizations, but what happens when we get there mm. is another story. Mm. It's another story. Firstly, to get through the door is a thing. It's often you're faced with someone who is fascinated with your hair. Oh, yeah. Oh my God, is that your real hair? Mm. Mm. Touching, mm. Touch yeah? Mm. Boundaries. Mm. Don't they feel a need to tell you that they're not racist because their boyfriend, mm. black, or the next door lady's cat mm. is black and stuff like that. Mm. You've got to get through all of this mm. stuff mm. before you even get to why you're there. Mm. You, yes. be yeah. you become yeah. that black mm. woman, mm -hmm. black mm. girl. That person. And then if you say, I don't want to talk about my hair, mm -hmm. or I don't really see the relevance of who the, what colour the cat is, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. That thing, I don't know how to get that over because it's a situation that I come across regularly. 
I don't mean to offend you. I, I want to share you. something. Please, mm -hmm. I, please, mm -hmm. please. I want to share something. Please. You know, the point that you're making mm -hmm. is so. You say tea don't have good thing, you know. What can I say, you know? You say, Mr. Tea don't have good thing, you know. I want to tell you something really Please. because it is all connected. There is no separation. Let me tell you, that which is happening in the school is informing how they behave toward us mm -hmm. and how we, how confident we feel to put up our hand in a classroom, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. to put up our hand at work, mm -hmm. to put up, you know what I mean, mm -hmm. like as we go through the education system mm -hmm. or even in the health service, anything. Mm -hmm. A doctor tells you they're going to do something to you and you just let them mm -hmm. because you don't have the confidence because you have been conditioned to think that there's no point in putting your hand up because you could not possibly yeah. know no, yeah. the yeah. right thing, mm -hmm. even about yourself, mm -hmm. right? This very, this is a Monday we're talking here. This is Monday. Mm -hmm. This very weekend, just like the day before yesterday, June 2019. <laughs> Miss Seth, I want you to know this, mm -hmm. right? I have been in this work for so many years. I, apart from being a researcher, I have been in the, the empowerment field and the mm -hmm. therapy field and all of that. But that does not alter the fact that, I think someone said it earlier on, we are human beings and therefore we are affected still. Mm -hmm. Not because we're trained does it mean that we're not human mm -hmm. beings mm -hmm. and feelings. So there was a gathering at my home mm -hmm. to celebrate the Earth Day mm -hmm. of someone important to me. Yes, ma'am. And because of that, there were a number of people from the Caribbean and a number of people not from the Caribbean. Not from the Caribbean. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. And in particular, there was this European woman in my home. Yes. In my garden. Yeah. On this lovely Saturday where mm. it was lovely and sunny, barbecue, music playing, everything mm. nice. Mm. And she looked at me and she said, I love your hair. And she went to put her hand oh. in my hair. Oh. Let me tell you. Oh. You'd be like a matrix. <laughs> As, as a good sister friend says, because yes. it happened to her recently too, you are going to, but there's a part of me that actually wants to not move. It wants to grab the hand and break it at the wrist, at the elbow, and in between. Like, because you have to learn yes. that you are assaulting somebody mm. yes, when you touch them yes. without permission. Mm, exactly. Or invitation. Do you hear this? It's Without so permission. Mm. Now here it is. I'm a grown woman. Mm. We've been here in your house. <laughs> in your house. Now you know what you said. Like th th they feel like, oh my god, oh my god. That very same start to thing started to happen. She didn't do the crying thing, but she did the. Oh, sorry. It's just that I'm not able to grow my hair long, and I, you know, I really love your hair. And I said, you cannot touch somebody without their permission. Furthermore, mm -hmm. we're tired of it. Now, mm. this is a social gathering in my home, you know, mm. and I can hear somebody who does look like us saying, Sandra, bring it down, bring it down. And I am not bringing it down. No, I am not bringing it down. Because we keep policing each other. I yes. am not bringing it down. If you put your hand in our head, do you hear? Understand, we are at a place now mm. where we recognize that it's an assault mm. and we will defend ourselves. Right. You do not have permission, mm. you are not invited to touch us without permission, mm. whether or not you think you know us or not. Mm. It's not acceptable. No matter who not acceptable. you are or where you are, we yeah. will stop it. Yeah, whoever well, your friend is. Mm. However it is you've got to be close to us in the first place. Right. Yeah. I don't care how many black friends you've got. Yeah. I mean, we've got to talk the two. Yeah. This is sister space. Absolutely. And we are in our, our space, space. Yeah. talking our thing. That's right. We've had people come in here from organisations who offer funding or this or that and they're funded. They're funded to offer services to mm. the entire population, but they don't know who we are. Mm. So what they're doing in actual fact is yes. getting mm. money 
under false or pretenses. pretenses. It is actually I, fraud. Mm, mm. It and is if we cultural it, fraud. It, it, of course it is. Mm. You are not able to provide a service yet. You are getting money to provide a service that you you yourself yeah. know mm -hmm. you right. cannot provide. Mm -hmm. Now you tell me that's not deceptive. I've got to tell you, yeah. Oh I my mean, gosh. I'm, I'm in a borough right now that we have a new uh, mayor and a new set of MPs who appear to be listening. But I've been in this borough Don't for 30 them. years. Mm -hmm. I'm hearing you. I've mm -hmm. been in this borough for 30 years. About two, three months ago, we were invited to do, because we do African dance and drumming, mm -hmm. we were invited to do a, a workshop and performance for the Windrush. Mm. It turns out that a white organisation, and this is often the case, mm. white organisations apply for money for Windrush. <laughs> then they call us in to go and deliver the workshop. They pay us peanuts. Mm. Our di dilemma is this. We have elder Caribbean people who, we know, when we're singing about our songs, yeah? And people may take offense to this, but our truth is our truth. Sack me from a job I do not have, okay? We it's, reserve the yeah, right mm -hmm. to have our own voice. Mm -hmm. uh, but they never told me that you can make it walk you. Listen, when you're talking to our elders, my brother never told me that you're gonna mango up. You 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 wanna you wanna be yeah. a, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. yeah. So they can't do it. No. But they know how to fill in the application. Mm. This is across the board. That is the, the windrush is one thing. It is this exploitation. Is across the board. Mm. Yeah. It is exploitation organization. And, yeah. and they know what they're doing. Mm -hmm. It's not a mistake. Mm -hmm. uh, in fact, many of them will friend you. They will affiliate oh, yeah. themselves with yeah, this yeah. because they have an ulterior yeah, motive. Yeah, now, yeah. this conversation we're having is a difficult one mm. because many of them will not want to hear this mm. and many of us will not want to say it. Yeah, but true. this, as far as I'm concerned, is part of our reparation. Come mm. on. We yeah. have to be saying yes. what the truth is. Yes. We are now graduated mm. we have been through the school system mm. we understand it yeah. we have been in the health service we mm. understand it. it we have been in your employment environment we, we understand, understand it. it we have been in your political system and voted for you uh -huh. we, we understand, understand it. in fact we understand more than you think we, we do, do. Yeah. okay and because many of us are too polite to say mm. there are some of us out here who will have a difficult conversation i am sick to the back teeth of these polite conversations, yes. the truth must be told. Yeah. The school system, the social policies mm. of Europe, mm. the whole white supremacist approach mm -hmm. to social policy and care and so-called education needs addressing. We know how to heal ourselves. Yeah. We know how to provide ourselves with good, healthy, conversations, education, relationship. Stop giving the money to other people. Right. Give the money to us. Let us heal ourselves. Unless it is your intention to continue to do what you did many years ago, which is to get rich off the backs Come of on. blacks. That's right. This school system is too close mm. in principles, policy and practice to a period of enslavement. Yeah, that's right. We know what is happening. Yes, ma'am. It is enough. Yeah. It is enough. Yeah. Sisters, mm -hmm. we give time. We say, eh, 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 eh